Courtney's very good friend, uh, friend of the show, my friend Sophia Yerkstevich, who will handle, has been doing an extraordinary job on Nesson. Yep. And will handle those duties tomorrow night. And she's on the Harbor One Hotline. Hey, Sophia. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I feel like it's been forever, but. I'm back. I yeah, you're, you you're back, and 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 the Bruins are back. We were just talking about Don Sweeney and uh, what he said yesterday about the goalie rotation. And so, I where are you on that? Do you, do, you, do a I want to know who you think uh, Montgomery ought to start and and in Game One, and uh, do you think they end up going rotation through the at least in this first series against Toronto? I think they do end up going rotation. Where I am on it is I'm so thankful I do not have to make those decisions because I do think this is one of the most stressful decisions, even though you have two of arguably the best goalies in the league and consistently performing well, blah, blah, blah. So it seems like a good problem to have. I think we saw it last year a little bit too. It's, It's a great problem to have, but it becomes a problem when you overthink it and when you're you know, you almost have too many or too good options, so you're not sure which one's the best one. I think Allmark is going to get the game one start. That's mm. just my prediction, but mm. I, it's not based on anything that I know. It's just what I'm thinking, what we were talking about on the show, on Nesson. We think he's going to get the game one start. And then after that, that's where it gets interesting. Then it's like, I think it's all going to be results and performance-based, not saying necessarily if Allmark might play well, but if the team doesn't in front of him or something like that, then then maybe it's something. We've seen this so many times. You just change the goalie to change things up. So I think it's all really going to depend on the games. However, I don't see Allmark playing in all, let's say, go seven. Even if he's light, though, I still feel like they'd give Sway a shot uh, in it to keep him kind of, um, what's the word, warm going. And because he's yeah. great, too, not just as a backer, right, but because he's, he can do the job just as well. So I think Allmark gets one. And then, again, like like uh, Sweeney answered, it's just a question, question marks after that, and I think the team's going to decide game by game. Sophia, we talk about the mental game for both of these guys, and Wiggy always talks about being a professional athlete and the need to be number one. You see these guys on and off the ice pretty consistently. Is it different – with Linus and Swayman, like are, are are they so close? Do they do they play off of each other, and that may be why they are so good? Yeah, one hundred percent. And they don't, um, you know, they they compete in a really. I don't want to sound like a Disney movie, but like in a really like <laughs> friendly, brotherly way, right? Like I, yeah. they really do keep each other the competition high, but there's zero animosity. It's not a show. I. If I wasn't as close as I am, if I was, you know, if this relationship was on another team and I didn't know, I'd be like, ah, maybe this is a little for show. Maybe this is a little for TV, but it absolutely is not. Like they hang out all the time. So he's always with his kids. And so the competition is internal, but they just, they want to be the best and they push each other. So it's, it's a, it's a win-win. And like I said, it sounds a little like um, Disney-ish or just like cute, but it, it, it works, obviously. It wouldn't be cute if they weren't good, but it is cute because they're great and it's working. Sophia, I know you brought up uh, results and performance, right? If you were in this situation, I know it's extremely difficult. How many games would you give each guy before you said, okay, results, performance, we need to go with this goalie for at least the remainder of the series or or kind of the remainder of the playoffs? I would say, oh, it's a good question. It's a great question. I would only, I do imagine there's going to be rotation, obviously, like we said. I would only stick to one guy, not based on him playing, like, great, kind of based on the other one maybe having a hard time. So it wouldn't be, like, if it is Linus and he's a lights out. I mean, that's such a hard decision. If he is lights out for the first two games, let's say that that's where they decide to go. Yeah, it's it's hard to make that switch. But if they do go to – if for Sway and, and three and four, and then Linus in five, and Linus maybe has a tough game, then, you know, it's kind of like you, you make the change if one of the goalies is struggling. And those conversations, too. It's not like they're just looking uh, at what's going on on the ice. I, I doubt any of these guys would ever be like, yeah, I'm kind of in my own head, take me out. That would never happen. But we saw, we, we see it with goalies all the time. It is a really different mental load in the playoffs right and I just don't want to underestimate or like say that that's not 
as important as, you know, the physical aspect of it. But if you're getting vibes, if you're talking to them that maybe they are in their own head, you have to, you have to go with the one who just feels and seems more confident. I don't imagine that happening. I think last year was a huge learning curve for these guys. And um, I really like, we talk to them all the time. Like they're, they're great. They're ready. They're excited. This is what they're living for. So I honestly see them stepping up even in their performance in the next, in the next few rounds. Toronto really has the opposite decision. They have to determine which goaltender is going to suck less, uh, because <laughs> yes. b- both oh, <laughs> both, the, both of the both of their goaltenders have have struggled of late. Yeah, and so you guys know I'm originally from Toronto, so I have so many friends there that have been texting me and basically saying that they're like they're going to screw it up. They're going to make the wrong goalie decisions. Their goalies are going to mess it up, and I feel. I feel so bad, not for Leafs fans at all. I don't care at all, but I feel bad for the team. You know, you guys think Boston media is tough, but over there, Toronto media is brutal. And I said this on air on Nesson the other day. I said, if anything, the, the Bruins have an advantage playing Toronto. They swept the series, blah, blah, blah. But if anything, the real advantage is the media there. Like, they, they're already down their throats of, oh, I can't believe they're playing the Boston Bruins who have their number. The goalies suck. The team has a bad record against them. Like, that is being jammed everywhere. And if you don't think people get affected by that, not true. So there's yeah. the assist. Like, the Toronto media is already giving the Bruins an assist. Well, they had, Toronto has not won a playoff series against mm. the Bruins since 1959. Go ahead, Curtis. That's what I started in radio. Oh, well, <laughs> so, you actually started in 58. <laughs> Well, if beloved um, son Drake picked Toronto, we'll be good. <laughs> oh my God! Um, did that happen? Did I miss it? Did, did, did is that it? I, I mean, Drake's from Toronto. He's, I believe he's a huge <laughs> Toronto fan, so it's all about who Drake picks. And if he picks uh, the Maple Leafs, then the Bruins should be good because he's uh, he's a mush. Yeah. Bieber, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bieber, right. Uh, Sophia, we were talking to Mike Milbury yesterday about it, but watching how they played the Maple Leafs throughout the regular season, the first two games go to a shootout and then overtime, and then the last two games in March, they beat them easily. Did you see a change in the way that they played them? Was Montgomery able to kind of shift his mindset and the guy's mindset and, and get their number that way? Yeah, you know, um, Great question, Court. And I, I don't know if I've necessarily seen like a big change in how they played them uh, with like X's and O's, but more, uh, you know, as you mentioned, the dates, it kind of spread out a couple close and then a couple uh, months in between and a bit spread out there. But uh, in general, like the, the way the Bruins were, were playing had changed, right? So the Leafs just happened to kind of fall into that time when they were making adjustments. But I do feel like you know, just watching them being at the games, they just, they're able to be calmer with, against the Leafs or in the four games that I saw, even if things get tight. And some of these, you know, if you look at the scores, that maybe look like a bit, bit of a, you know, discrepancy in some of the games, but they really just never, I don't know, they never got in their own head. And they, they, they it's a cliche, Charlie Coyle always says that we got to play the right way. and We got to stick to our game. And that just happened. It just happened against the Leafs. It doesn't, they plan on doing that against every opponent. Doesn't always happen. But against Toronto, it did. And I'm, I'm going to give you guys a little uh, tidbit that I, I won't say who, who it was. But when I'm prepping my notes, I'm in like a little studio in the rink. And these studios, there are these like tiny rooms, thin walls, whatever. And sometimes they're attached to the dressing room. Like I can't. I don't have access to the the Bruins room, but I can hear a bit through the wall. And I was, I was doing my notes, and I'm not going to say who it was, but I heard one of the players in the last game against Toronto say, "Like I can't wait to bleep and beat this team." And <laughs> they they just like I could feel, and they were all like they were all talking about it. This is when they were getting ready, just getting dressed to take to the ice. You know, nothing had happened, but they just have that mentality, and that's that's the one you want to hear. I hope it happens. I said this the other day. I hope it happens here at the TD Garden, that the Maple Leafs are eliminated because there's nothing better than your fellow Torontonians standing outside <laughs> watching the game and bawling their eyes out and screaming in frustration, Sophia. I know. It's, you know what? It's, it's almost funny. Like, it's sad, but it's funny. All my friends are texting me, like, congrats on the, the series win already. But that is a <laughs> dangerous mentality to have for the, for, yeah. the, um, for the Bruins, obviously, right? Like, we've seen – this is my favorite – thing about the league is the parody uh we've seen it there just seems to be a a curse against toronto and i i don't see it changing anytime soon 
Well, um, certainly you guys have the coverage, and this will be uh, Jack's last season. I, I'm sure, you know, when was was that a surprise to you? And uh, what's it been like working with Jack? Jack has been, I've said this since my audition days. I remember flying in from Toronto and doing on a, an audition with Nesson and getting an email. I don't know how Jack got my email. He got my email somehow, but he, getting an email from Jack because I did the audition with Jack Brick, you know, whoever was on air at the time. And he wrote me like the nicest paragraph encouraging me and saying, you know, he really hopes I get the job. He has been an advocate of mine from day one. And I didn't know much about Jack and Brick. Like I was in my little Canadian bubble doing my Canadian sports and, and hockey. And I didn't know that much about them. But as soon as I, you know, joined Boston, I realized how impactful and how important they are to Bruins Nation. And I get it. Like your play-by-play, your color guys uh, and girls now are in your living room, in your home. And they have been, and Jack, you know, Jack has been the best, like helping me with, with things when I first started. And I have loved, I have absolutely loved working with him. And to answer your question, yes, I was surprised. Obviously, everybody knew what was going on because you could hear it. You could hear it on air. And he came out with, you know, on the Globe, that article about what he was going through and his health issues. Um, it's heartbreaking. We had him, we had him on our, our post-game final the other day after the ceremony. And obviously, I listened to him doing the game. So you hear him struggle a little bit. But having him on set and just, you know, he watching him try to get the words out and saying, like, I've tried everything. We don't know what's wrong. And I have to step away. Like, if you really think about it, that's just so devastating. It's, mm. it's something that you can't, um, you can't figure out. And it's getting in the way of doing your favorite thing ever that Jack was really, really good at. And so he's forced to step away. Like a lot of athletes, players are forced to retire because of injuries. Um, but this one's, you know, uh, neurological, I guess, and, and it's, it's tough, but I think the, the silver lining, and I, I did almost tear up on air, was Jack wasn't bitter about it. He was like, I re- I'm leaving with joy. Like, I am thankful for this 19-year joy ride, and, um, and that, was, that was the nicest to see, that he wasn't bitter, but he had to step away because he couldn't, in his own words, do the job to his standards anymore. From your perspective, Sophia, how important is it for Jim Montgomery that this team advances at least this first round, or does it not matter? Oh yeah, um, I don't think it would matter immediately to his job. I think it's extremely important. I think it's important for him as just um, in his in his own head too. Yeah. But I don't think it would matter as in it takes effect like immediately. But maybe depending on next season, it plays in to it. You know what I mean? It's like it's going to be in the in the in the back burner there. But I don't think it would have an immediate impact. I think it's too small of a sample size, and he does such a great job with them. And and he's like, you know, everyone has end of season interviews. The players love him. Like they really, really, really do. And that matters, obviously, to the um, management. And they've seen some certain players who you know, maybe weren't expected to produce as much as they did. And we saw Trent Frederick win the seventh player award, like Danton Heinen and and Heinen, you know, he's familiar with Jim Montgomery from college days too. He's already had his stint with the Bruins and he had like an unbelievable year. So it's, they know it's the coaching and obviously Jim knows how to bring out the best in each player, which is why I think he's, he's going to stick around. But I do think, yeah, if it's a first round exit again, that's going to be, kind of saved for later depending on how the future goes you know what i mean sophia last one and we know jack had a great career any chance now you throw your name in the ring for the play by play play. play. yeah of the bruins is that something that you aspire for you know what i've had a couple people ask me that and until they asked me i was like oh i never really thought about that so no i don't aspire to that um but, you know, absolutely not for this year. It would be, I think I would need so much training, and I'm not trying to, you know, put myself down or anything like that. But it is such a difficult job, and I don't see, I don't think, I've never tried it, I don't think I see the game that way. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm actually slightly dyslexic, and I've had to work through so much to be on, on TV in speech therapy and stuff, and I've, I, this is as, as a kid, and so I invert numbers all the time. And when I'm doing stats on air, like 
you have you guys have no idea. I'm so in my head sometimes. I'm like, wait, 25 or 52, and it takes me. I have like techniques that I use. So I already, I'm already challenged enough with that, and I think you know it doesn't really come come across on air. But if I had to do jersey numbers and and the game so fast, I don't know. I'm right now. The answer, the the quick answer is hell no. But maybe down the line, maybe yeah. I'll maybe I'll audition. Maybe down the line. Well, what, um, uh, you know, whatever whatever happens, I would just say this to to Nesson. Less razor, more Sophia. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. that is uh, no, no disrespect Big to my razor. Uh, no, no disrespect to my guy. Uh, you know, I brought him over here to Wei with me, but good, I would job, prefer bro. more Sophia, less razor. All right, well, we can't wait to watch you tomorrow night. Go get him, and thanks for taking the time this morning. All right, tomorrow night we got pregame at seven on Nesson, guys. Puck drop eight. We'll see you then. Love you. Thanks for having me. All right, go bees.